All right, we got three uh, Lenovo M710Q tiny units here. Uh, they're in a uh, hyper-converged Ceph cluster. Uh, they all have Proxmox loaded. Uh, each one is uh, has 24 gigs of RAM, um, a 500 gig uh, hard drive, and then a 256 gig M.2 SSD. Um, each one has a, uh, I think it's a 7th Gen i5, so they're a little older here. Uh, but I picked up each of these for, um, I think it was 41 bucks a piece. And then I got the extra RAM, I got the um, got the SSDs, and um, I had to order uh, the power supplies for them as well. So it ended up being about, before tax, about 270 275 for uh, all three. I 3D printed the uh, stand that they're on, and then I just had this old little trend net dummy switch here um, that they're all run into. I'll show you the back here. They all just have those short little patch cables looped into the back of the switch there. Um, but yeah, that's my cluster. I'm gonna show you real quick how to set up um, Ceph. Um, so super, you know, well, fairly simple. Um, and you get a pretty cool setup where you have redundancy where if one goes down, um, you still have, you know, everything left. You'll Your uh, VMs will migrate to one of the other nodes. Uh, you can, um, because of the redundancy of the core in between the three, you can have one go down and it's fully replicated between the other two nodes. Um, so you you have redundancy there. Um, I'll go ahead and show you what I got going on over here. Um, tell you what, I'm probably gonna switch to uh, uh, screen recording here. Uh, let's see here. All right. So, um, we have our nodes here. Uh, we have our data center in Proxmox. Um, so, um, right here we're in Ceph, we can see that uh, health is okay. When you're first setting up Ceph, you're gonna need to go to each individual node themselves. Um, they're not gonna show up here altogether in your cluster, obviously, because uh, if you're first setting it up, they're not <laughs> clustered yet. You'll just have them each at their own individual IP addresses, and I'm not worried about you having that IP because I'll probably have that changed uh, by the time uh, this video gets released. But uh, yeah, so you go to your um, you go to your node, um, yeah, like whatever node you want to start on. Uh, to start off, you need to you know wipe your disks, uh, the ones that you're going to be using for Ceph. You do need two t two separate disks. I have my 256 gig SSDs running Proxmox itself, and then I have the 500 gig hard drives uh, for Ceph. Not great for performance wise, but this is really just a testing lab setup. Um, so yeah, uh, you go to your um, uh, your disks here. Uh, you can see I have my 500 gig disk right here. That's the one I'm using. Um, I'd, I'm not going to wipe it, but you would wipe disk. Um, I'll show you real quick. You can you do that, and then it'll you'll hit yes, and then it'll wipe the disk. It's super quick. Um, so you would wipe it, and then um, uh, you're going to want to set up your networking first. Um, so Ceph uses this entirely separate network from what you're going to be you know running the actual you know, host off of. Um, it's going to be like a back end like data network, um, non routed. So you're just gonna have this running on, uh, you know, whatever switch you have it on. I just have a dummy switch, so it doesn't care about you know VLAN tagging or anything like that. Um, so I do tag it, and it doesn't care. But if it went beyond the switch, like if I had these nodes on a different switch, it uh, wouldn't work. But since they're all on the same switch, they're all on the same VLAN, which is VLAN 100. Um, it does work. Um, so first off, you're just gonna create your VLAN. Um, I made mine VLAN 100. Just named it VLAN 100. I made the VLAN raw device, the actual physical network interface of the host, which everything runs off of. It's just this guy right here. You'll, yours will be something similar. Um, once you create this uh, Linux VLAN, you're going to uh, create a, uh, it's, it's a new um, Linux bridge in your create box here in Proxmox. And I named this, you know, mine VMBR1 is the next one, logical one after VMBR0, which is the default one that came you know, automatically in there. Um, and I just made a kind of a random private network that I'm gonna be using for Ceph. Um, this is the network I'm using. Uh, the IPs of each node, since I only have three, is gonna be 
the same you know subnet, just one you know one, two, and three essentially. Um, you don't need a gateway, just bridge your VLAN 100 port and save it, and that's it. You're gonna make sure you apply your network changes when it's done. You're gonna do that to each node. Uh, I have the exact same setup. I just have not that. I just have the obviously the IP incremented for each one so they're all in the same subnet so that they all know how to talk to each other and they're using that same VLAN 100 tag for Ceph. Um, so once you get your networking set up, um, the rest is fairly simple. So you get a Ceph, I already have it installed, and you click on Ceph, uh, if you don't have it installed it will just say, do you want to install Ceph? Just yes, you want to install it. it just hit ins literally just hit install, I think the one I installed was Reef, if I remember correctly it's like 1804 was the version I believe. I might be remembering incorrectly, but that is the version that I have installed. Um, it may be different for you at the time of you watching it, um, but you're gonna wanna do that to every single node. Make sure you have um, Ceph installed. Um, and then you're gonna go to uh, configuration uh, and, uh, I'm sorry, not configuration, monitor, um, and for each one, I, you have to, one node will automatically be your manager and your monitor node. You want all of them to be managers and monitors because if one goes offline and it happens to be your manager node or, or your single monitor node, your whole entire cluster is just gonna go down because none of the other ones know what to do um, with the manager and monitor offline. But if they're all managers and monitors, then you're good to go. So you literally just you know hit uh, create monitor up here. You choose your node, make it a monitor, do that for all three. Same thing for the managers, create, select your nodes one at a time, make them all managers. Uh, for your OSDs, you just wanna make sure they're all in. Um, so you're gonna, well, first off, you're gonna create an OSD. Sorry, I got ahead of myself there, but if you, uh, when you're first getting into um, you know, the set configuration portion, you hit create OSD, and you'll, sh you'll have the unused disk pop up here. I don't have any unused ones, because I already used them, obviously, but you have it pop up here, um, and then you just select it and you hit create, and that's about it. That's not not really much more to it. Um, once it is created and in, you can stop the disk. You can take it out. I can I can take a uh, disk out right now, and you know it'd be totally fine. And I can do my um, the disk rep replicated across the other, so the VM would migrate and it would all be all stay redundant and up. Um, so yeah, once that's all in. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have your Ceph pool created. Um, you can do that just literally by hitting create up top, make a Ceph pool. I'll just show you mine, for example. Just chose my name there, size of three, minimum size of two, and then PG Auto Scaler um, is on. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's, that's all about all it is. I think those are the default um, settings, if I remember correctly, um, but um, I may have I may have set those up. I honestly forget, but um, but yeah, that's that's about it as far as stuff goes. Once you do all that, it will you'll have a pool, and then you'll see this pool shows up in each node. So then you can use this pool for like a server. You would uh, no, not that. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, actually, it is that my bad? You can see the disk image is in that Ceph pool. Uh, so like when you go to create a VM, I'll just show you real quick. Um, we'll just not name it. Uh, we'll just choose this random Ubuntu server here. Um, you're gonna select your Ceph pool, and that'll be the storage. You don't want it to be local LVM, or else that's just gonna be the local, you know, node, and then it won't be able to migrate. Or you can migrate, sorry, but it won't be, you know, utilizing Ceph and highly available. So you'll choose that pool, and then you'll use that for your storage. Um, I think I got ahead of myself a little bit here. Um, so um, for the uh, actual cluster, um, you go to data center at the top, cluster, join information. Um, well, I'll probably have to blur that out for you. Well, you can't see the whole thing, it's okay. But you hit join config information and um, on like whatever, whatever node, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then you copy that join information, and then you go to the other node, and you hit join cluster. I obviously can't click that because, um, uh, you know, there's, 
it's I've already done it. It's already a cluster, but uh, you hit join cluster, and um, and it would allow you to, to join like the that other cluster that's on the same network. So you use the drone information, join cluster. It reaches out across the network, sees if that uh, cluster is available. If so, it associates itself, and then you just do that for every single, each one. You take that joint information, paste it in, and then you join cluster. Um, uh, you want to do that before you configure Ceph, um, obviously, because if you don't have a cluster, you can't do the Ceph portion. Um, but that's you know all again, super easy. There's not really much to it. Um, you just join it, and then you go through those Ceph steps that really aren't that. Complicated. Um, now, if you want to do like high availability, which you know I think is a cool thing, because if you do high availability, uh, you can do uh, where. Sorry, I have my uh, my screen recording's in, in the way, but you can um, uh, with with high availability, you can have it so that if a uh, server goes offline, like an individual VM on one of the nodes goes offline or you know shuts down. Um, you can set the default state to, to started so that it will actually just turn back on um, automatically and without any um, you know, input from you, it will just make it highly available. Um, so you, to set that up, you would go to data center, go to HA, groups, you would create a group, make a group ID, it doesn't really matter what it is, just you know, choose a name, choose all your nodes, create it, and that's it. Uh, you can do no failback. Um, that just makes it so that if a node that goes offline, uh, so like say if my node three went offline and it was hosting a server, and then that server went to a different node, and then node three came back online, the default action is to fail back, where that uh, VM would go back, migrate back automatically to that node. You can just do no failback, where it just stays on whatever node it goes to. Um, restricted. I also forget what that means. Uh, in this in this circumstance here, uh, in this context, I'm not sure, but I don't think it uh, particularly matters. And uh, if it does matter to you, then you've probably done the research on it and then uh, looked it up. But it does not matter to me. Um, I don't have any fencing set up either. But yeah, so that's about it. Um, so you make your you know cluster. You go through the Ceph steps. You install Ceph. You set up your uh, the network portion first. First, um, set up your monitor monitors and managers. You wipe your disk, create your OSD, create your pool, and that's honestly about it. Uh, but yeah, super cool uh, technology and just kind of cool uh, little cluster to have running in the house. If you want to run like you know a uh, uh, pie hole or something like that, you need it to be highly available. You need it to be up all the time. Your family's using it or what have you, or if you're using it even in a production environment um, like. This is, you know, just basic enterprise um, configurations at this point. But um, it's kind of cool to be able to take that into your home and use it for, you know, simple stuff like Pi-hole or Home Assistant, stuff like that where uh, you can just keep it up, you know, at least as highly available as you <laughs> possibly can make it, um, you know, just on your own in your house. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's pretty uh, pretty awesome. That's about, that's about it. Um, I monitor all this with uh, Zabbix. I might make some videos on Zabbix in the future because um, it's a pretty cool uh, monitoring software. Um, uh, is super super handy uh, with alerting and just monitoring all of that. But yeah, that's about it. I will uh, catch you all in the next one.